So greetings, so welcome to today's class. So we will get started with uh, steering systems from today. So as uh, many of us are exposed to while traveling in a car, right? so the driver essentially rotates a steering wheel and uh, it is expected that the orientation or the heading of the vehicle changes in response to uh, the driver's uh, input. So in this module what we are going to uh, learn is how is this task achieved in a typical automobile, right? So that is what we are going to uh, learn. So from the driver's steering wheel, what, how is the uh, command for steering transmitted to the steered wheels and from there how does the orientation of the vehicle changes. So those are the points that we are going to address in this particular module. So we will follow a similar structure you know like uh, uh, not necessarily in the same order that is like we look at the uh, functions, the requirements, the uh, components, the operation and the analysis right. So that is what we are going to uh, do in this particular module. So to begin with let us first articulate what are all the functions of an automotive uh, steering system and then we will be able to correlate them as and when we, uh, we look at uh, specific components and subsystems, right. So if you look at, uh, at a broad level, is a steering system should enable the driver to regulate the vehicle along a desired path. Okay. So that is one important requirement and should enable the control of the vehicle's trajectory under normal and emergency conditions. So this is true with uh, both manual steering and today given the uh, growing interest in autonomous vehicles, even one wants uh, the vehicle, steer, vehicle to be steered autonomously, the steering system should respond to a controller's command and then enable that, right? So that is very important and it is a critical system, steering system is well studied and even the vehicle steering response or what is called as cornering response is of uh, great importance to vehicle designers because it is something, you know, like which the driver is also sensitive to, you know, like how the vehicle responds when the vehicle is steered, hmm. the same thing is uh, important for acceleration, braking and so on, uh, other systems that we have studied. So similarly, the steering is also important because it is a critical system to ensure proper what is called as handling of the vehicle. So when, when we take a course uh, on vehicle dynamics, right, so one would spend quite a bit of time in learning what is called as cornering dynamics or handling dynamics you know, where uh, which essentially deals with how the vehicle responds when it is being steered because when we are steering a vehicle we are also displacing the vehicle along the lateral direction right and uh, then the question becomes you know, what are the corresponding dynamic phenomena that we need to be considering and uh, how does the driver respond to them, right? And uh, whether it is within reasonable limits as far as the driver is concerned, okay? So uh, that's why it's called handling, you know, like how, how well the vehicle performs, you know, like when steered, okay? That essentially goes under what is called as handling dynamics or cornering dynamics. That you will study in a course on vehicle dynamics. But we now in this course we are going to uh, look at 
how the staining system is constituted and then it, it works currently right. So, that is going to be the scope of our discussion. So, uh, before we go and look at you know of course, once again we are going to restrict ourselves to a typical uh, four wheeled uh, road vehicle steering you know in particular uh, we are going to look at uh, passenger car steering you know like uh, uh, and maybe like single unit vehicle steering you know to, to be uh, general right. So, in by and large if you look at most passenger cars, most SUVs and uh, uh, buses and trucks you know like which are single unit vehicles. So, we would observe that the front wheels are the ones which are steer right. So, we are going to look at how this is achieved and how that translates into a change in the orientation of the vehicle that is something which we are going to uh, study. So, before uh, the current steering mechanisms came into being we had what is called as fifth wheel steering you know like what is this uh, fifth wheel steering. So, let us let me draw a very simple schematic. So, just uh, not to scale you know like just to convey the point. You know. So, let us say you know like I consider a vehicle and let us say these are my rear wheels and let us suppose uh, you know like I am rotating my entire front axle. about this pivot point okay the front axle is pivoted about this point and let us say we rotate the entire front axle about this point what is going to happen is then if I project the rear axle center and also the center line of this front axle they are going to intersect at some point which is the center of turn. Okay, and let us let us assume that this is my vehicle center of gravity, the distance between the center of turn and the vehicle center of gravity is what is called as a turning radius. So, in this fifth wheel steering, so these are the front wheels, these are the rear wheels. Okay. So, uh, in a fifth wheel steering, what happens is that the entire front axle is steered or turned about a pivot okay. So, this uh, happened in the uh, the older generation vehicles, but not today. So, if you look at uh, critical uh, important aspects of uh, the fifth wheel steering the entire steered axle in general front okay. it is not necessary that we always need to steer only the front wheels but by and large we steer the front wheels right. The entire steered axle or the front axle is turned or rotated about its pivot right. Uh, this changes the orientation of the front wheels because when we want to take a turn from a straight path you know we need to turn the wheels right some wheels so that like it the vehicle now goes uh, uh, follows a or goes along a curved path right. So, that is important. So, this changes the relative orientation of the front wheels uh, from its straight ahead position okay. So, this is what is called as fifth wheel steering. So, this was initially uh, used utilized, but however you know one can immediately know that if I want to rotate the entire steered axle one needs to put in a lot of effort and as the vehicle speeds increased you know this effort also increased okay. So, that is a limitation of fifth wheel steering okay high force required to rotate the entire axle so which rendered it unsuitable as speed increased you know like so
as vehicle speed uh, increased you know like uh, I think uh, this was uh, difficult right. So, this is what is called fifth wheel steering. So, then how did steering systems in uh, evolve you know like people came up with different steering um, mechanisms which enable which ensure that we are only rotating the wheels not the entire axle right think about it you know why should I rotate the entire axle to change the orientation of the vehicle. So, what, what did people think of? They thought that okay let us rotate only the wheels which are steered. So, those are what are called steered wheels right. So, the steered wheels orientation alone was changed and that gave rise to different steering designs right. And we are going to look at one mechanism or one such uh, thought process which is commonly used in uh, uh, current automobiles right and how it is realized. In a few classes of vehicles you know like uh, for example, let us say even if we take uh, uh, battle tanks right. So, uh, which are which have a tracked vehicle configuration right in a battle tank you will see that there are tracks on the left and the right hand side. So, we have what is called skid steering. So, what happens is that the tracks on both sides when one wants to rotate they are rotated at different speeds. So, the speed difference essentially creates a yaw motion that is what is called as skid steering ok the essentially the track skid ok and the wheel rotates we are not going to look at that right. So, our focus is going to be only on linkage based steerings you know which are used in current uh, automobiles. But the main idea you know like still you know like irrespective of this final steering mechanism which is used or the main uh, requirement is that while taking a turn the axis of rotation this is the ideal uh, requirement. So, the axis of rotation of the front wheels see of course ok throughout this discussion let us consider you know as I told single unit vehicles single unit four wheeled vehicles let me be even more specific right with the front wheels being steer ok. So, unless otherwise I explicitly say so this is going to be the scope of our uh, discussion. So, this is what we will consider. So, if we consider this class of vehicles where the front wheels are being steered. So, what happens is that the axis of rotation of the front wheels I will uh, I will essentially illustrate it using a simple uh, schematic should intersect the axis of the rear wheels which are unsteered at a common point ok. So, this common point of intersection is the instantaneous center of turn ok. So, that is the main idea here right ok. So, what do I uh, mean by this you know like let, let me uh, give a simple schematic then we will uh, come to this. So, let us look at this diagram right. So, if we uh, look at this uh, schematic we will see that these are the this is the these are the rear wheels ok these are the front wheels. Suppose, let us now only rotate the steered wheels ok. So, these are the these are what are called as the steered wheels ok. So, the left and the right front wheels. Suppose, we rotate the uh, two steered wheels and we draw two lines which are perpendicular to the plane of the 
steered wheels right. So, let us say oh, that is my axis of the wheels right. So, this is a very simple schematics you we will uh, as when we go to later part of uh, steering we are looking at uh, what are called as wheel alignment parameters we will also see how a wheel is aligned ok uh, with respect to the vehicle and also other uh, entities right. So, if we if we draw a simple uh, to have a simple visualization let us say you we draw two lines which are perpendicular to the plane of the two steered wheels then we draw a line which is coming from the rear axle center and all of them meet at a set some point a common point right. Then we essentially this is what is called as the instantaneous uh, center of turn ok. So, then what happens is that let us say we call this point O right and let us say this is our C G you draw a line segment from O to the center of gravity this is the turning radius ok. So, this is the idea you know like so of course, why this way because you will see that when we are having uh, such a an arrangement right we will see that the so called inner wheel will turn on a circle of smaller radius than the outer wheel ok. So, these two wheels one which is inside is what is called as an inner wheel it can be the left or the right wheel ok depending on the direction of turn. So, that is going to be on a circle of smaller radius when compared to the outer wheel right which is going to be on a circle of larger radius ok. So, that is the uh, a requirement ok. So, essentially we know that we have a few requirements while taking a turn the inner wheel uh, has to be has to travel right on a circle of smaller radius than the outer wheel so this requires that hence the steering system should ensure or enable that enable the rotation of the inner wheel by a larger angle than the outer wheel ok. So, that is that is how we can achieve the requirement that the inner wheel travels on a smaller radius than the outer wheel ok. So, this is achieved by what is called as the steering geometry. So, what is the steering geometry it is nothing but a combination of linkages that provide for the inner and outer wheels uh, to trace out circles of different radii ok that is the steering geometry ok. Uh, so, th this is the steering geometry so, that will uh, enable this uh, functionality to be achieved. So, 
an engineer named Ackerman, right, was is credited to come up with a geometry which essentially uh, satisfies these these requirements. Okay, so let's look at that. So we are going to look at what is called as the Ackerman steering geometry. Okay, so we know what a what a steering geometry is, right? So it's just a arrangement of linkages. So what is this Ackerman steering geometry? You know, like let's uh, let's look at that. So the core idea, we'll see how this helps, right? We are, we'll also look at the components of a typical steered steering system and the uh, steered uh, wheel. So, for the time being, uh, although this is true even for other types of uh, vehicles, right? So, let us consider uh, what is called as a solid axle steering, okay? So, that is like there is a solid front axle, you know, which is being steer so let me uh, mark all the important components uh, uh, in this figure so this is the front axle so you can immediately see that there is a rod here which is placed this is what is called as a track rod in passenger cars, you know, the, due to the steering gear arrangements, uh, we will see that this takes a name of a rack, okay, depending on what type of uh, steering we have. Then uh, you can see that there are two elements, okay, uh, here. This is what is called as a tie rod plus a steering arm assembly, okay. We will look look closer at this entire assembly when we come to the components, right. So this is what is called as a tie rod and a steering arm assembly. There are two of them on either side. So you can see that these four elements, the, the front axle, the tie rod steering arm assembly, two on either side and the track rod form four, a set of four linkages. And the idea proposed by Ackerman is to have them as a as a trapezoid, okay. And this front axle is essentially mounted on a spindle, which is also connected to this uh, tie rod and steering arm assembly, using these joints or what are called as kingpins in heavy vehicles, okay. We'll see that this is a kingpin. And uh, essentially, if you uh, look at uh, uh, rack and pinion steering, which are used in passenger cars, you know, people call it as a ball joint. Okay, we look at uh, both short as we go look at the components, right? So these are the joints at which everything is held together, right? So that is the axle and the uh, tie rod steering arm assembly are held together. Uh, what to say through a pivot? where you have a kingpin, right? They are held together by either a kingpin or a ball joint, okay? So that is what it is used. The term kingpin is used for heavy vehicle steering traditionally. If you look at passenger cars which have a rack and pinion steering, it is what is called as a ball joint, right? Okay. So what is the core idea of this Ackerman steering geometry is that we draw a line, line segment from this kingpin to the center of the rear axle, okay, on both the left and the right hand side. So this point is what is called as a steering uh, pivot point, okay. So that, that is where the track rod is connected to the tie rod, okay. So the idea is to place the steering pivot point on the line segment joining the kingpin on the center point of the rear axle, okay. So that is the core idea behind this Ackerman steering geometry so that all the four elements take the form of a uh, trapezoid, right. So let me write down the key points uh, of the steering geometry. So the two ends. 
of the steered axle have a spindle pivoted around a kingpin. Okay. So, then the tie rods are the steering arm assembly right. So, are attached to the kingpin. Okay. So, that is the second point. Then and each steering pivot point is placed on the line segment joining the corresponding kingpin to the center of the rear axle. Okay, so, this is the these are the key points of this Ackerman steering mechanism.